Welcome to worship on Sunday, July 16th, 2023. I'm glad you all made it here safely today. Um, a few names have been added to the prayer list since it was printed. Those names are Val, Des, and Gladys Steinmetz. We will have a spoken word service today. Uh, Martin's on vacation and Bonnie Schultes was going to play today, but she called me from the road about 8.45 and said that she, she simply could not get here because of the road closure she encountered um, from where she was coming from. So, um, so it will be a spoken service today. Um, I also understand we're having some connectivity issues with the PowerPoint right now, so if you're not seeing the words up on the screen and I keep going because I don't have eyes in the back of my head, just let me know so we can, uh, we can get through it. Um, the leaders of Pops Treasures, our uh, monthly resale boutique, are in need of newspapers and circulars to wrap up uh, some of their items. If you have any old newspapers that you can donate to the cause, uh, please be in touch with Mary O'Mealy. If there are no other announcements I neglected to make, then uh, let us quiet our voices and our hearts as we begin our worship time with a time of silence. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's get the candles lit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time, but as I think it's just going to be Ben coming forward. All right. I'm going to ask you all to participate in this as well from your seats. So we're going to have a lot, a lot of young at heart today and you two are going to help show them what to do. So, what do I got here? What is this? Um, sesame seeds. This is sesame seeds. You want, to, you want to eat a sesame seed? You want to eat a sesame seed? It's not that gross. It's fine. What happens if I plant these? They grow Sesame Street. They grow Sesame Street. I think that's absolutely right. That's where Sesame Street came from, is they poured a whole bunch of these in a, in a TV studio somewhere. Um, <laughs> no, I don't, now I don't know if these seeds are, are like have been roasted or something, so they won't grow, but, but, uh, but if I throw seeds on the ground, what's going to happen? Sesame Something will grow, right? Well, Jesus told us a story about seeds. So I want to... Uh, act this out. So you two stand up with me and I invite you all to do the actions as well. So Jesus went out to sit by the sea and a whole crowd of people gathered around him and he told them this story. 
He said, a farmer went out to scatter seeds in a field. So let's just scatter seeds in a field. And as he did that, the seeds fell in four different places. And I want you to guess what happened to those seeds. First, some seeds fell along the road. What do you think happened to the ones that fell on the road? Um, cars, ran over. cars ran over them? <laughs> that would have happened if Jesus was here today. Back 2,000 years ago, what do you think happened? Horses. Horses? Uh, maybe they did. But what Jesus told us is that birds came and ate them all up. So pretend you're a bird eating those seeds off the road. <laughs> all right. Okay, so then some seed fell on very rocky ground. Very rocky ground. What do you think happened to them? They couldn't grow. They couldn't grow and fish ate them. They couldn't grow and fish ate them? Yeah. Well, maybe today, but uh, normally, no, you're absolutely right. What happened was there was a little bit of soil there, so they started to spring up quickly. They, they grew really fast. But then, because there, there was so little soil there with all the rocks, when the sun came out, they withered away and just died. Well, then some seeds fell into thorn bushes. What do you think happened to those? They couldn't grow because of like all thorns. Well, they grew, they grew, but then the thorn bushes choked them out. No. <laughs> <laughs> the thorn bushes pushed them in and shoved them and, and, and choked them out so they, they, they couldn't grow and they died too. But some seeds fell into good soil. And they grew, and they grew, and they grew. Come on, grow with me. Grow. They grew, they grew, they grew, they grew. Jesus said some of them grew 30-fold, some of them grew 60-fold, some of them grew 100-fold. Wow. And they did a dance. And then Jesus explained this story. But I'm not going to explain it to you now. I invite you to listen to the gospel and hear how Jesus explained it. And it's okay if you don't understand it right now. It's okay if you don't understand it right now. Our, our understanding of Bible stories grows as we go through life, just like those seeds grow. So thank you very much. Let's bow our heads for a prayer. Dear God, thank you for seeds. Thank you for growing. Help us to be good soil. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats. Thanks. A reading from Isaiah. God's word to Israel's exiles is as sure and effective as never failing precipitation. Good, good for today. Their return to the Holy Land in a new exodus is cheered on by singing mountains and by trees that clap their hands. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the rivers. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich with grazing, and the hills be flowed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. A reading from Romans. There is no condemnation for those who live in Christ. God sent Christ to accomplish what the law was unable to do. 
condemn sin and free us from its death-dealing ways. The Spirit now empowers proper actions and values in our lives and gives us the promise of resurrected life. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. For the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. Sending God's own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, God condemns sin in the flesh so that just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their mind on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. <clears throat> but you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, through the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through this, this spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd sat on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and in the sowing, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom of heaven and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, well, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Listen, listen, I have a message for you. Yes, for you. You know, every now and then someone will tell me, Pastor, it's like today's sermon was written just for me. Now, usually I didn't write the sermon for that one person, but I'm always glad to hear when the Holy Spirit connects with somebody like that. But today, today's message is for you. Yes, you, the one who's wondering right now, does he mean me? Yes, I do. 
This message is for you. So listen, a sower went out to sow. Now this isn't sow with a needle and thread, but S-O-W, spreading seeds on the ground. I'll be honest, sowing seeds is not my specialty. But then again, this sower in the story, I'm not sure it was his specialty either, because he wasn't very careful with where he threw those seeds. He must have sown an awful lot of seeds, and they got everywhere. They got stuck in the soles of your shoes. They got caught in your hair, in the wheels of any passing carts, seeds upon seeds upon seeds. He threw those seeds like they were rice or rose petals at a wedding, like they were confetti at the Rose Bowl, like they were ticker tape in New York City when John Glenn returned from orbit in 1962. Listen, some of those seeds fell on the footpath. And all the birds had a feast, the starlings and chickadees and warblers and crows. They were full for days. And now listen close. Here's the secret. When anyone hears the word of God and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. That's what the seed on the footpath is all about. So listen. Some of the seeds fell on rocky ground. You know, like here in Johnsonville. Around here, we know rocky ground. Last year, I ordered a, a swing set kit for my kids, and when it arrived, I was able to put all the pieces together and get it set up, no problem. And then I tried to anchor it in the ground. Big problem. None of the things that were suggested in the instruction manual came close to working in this rocky ground. Thankfully, Scott Ships came to the rescue, sharing generously of his time and of his rebar to make it work. So anyway, some of the seeds fell on rocky ground, and those seeds started to grow right away. But those rocks, those Johnsonville rocks, oh, well, the roots couldn't find anywhere to go. And when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered and died. Now listen, as for what was sown in rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word of God and immediately receives it with joy, with a big party. So excited. But there's no root there. And when that person finds out sooner or later that the word of God doesn't protect them from suffering, well, that person falls away just as fast. Well, some of those seeds fell among thorn bushes, and they started to grow just fine. But as they grew into plants, there was no room for them. The thorn bushes pushed them and squeezed them and took all the good nutrients from the soil, and those plants died. Now listen, as for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word of God, but other things in their life push and squeeze and take time and energy from the word. Not just one thing, but a lot of things. Things like money and work and worries and politics and television and smartphones, and all kinds of things that distract from the word of God and it yields nothing. But some of those seeds, they fell on good soil. Rich, loamy soil. Soil with nutrients and nitrogen and earthworms and whatever else soil needs. I don't know anything about soil, but I know what happened to those seeds. They grew. They grew and they grew and they grew. First the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. And they bore fruit, so much fruit, as much as a hundredfold. Now listen. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word of God, who listens, who ponders it, who takes it in, and who responds. And with joy and hope and love, spreads that word to others, to 30 others, to 60 others, even to 100 others. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And I mean you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. Listen. This whole story is about listening, paying attention, hearing. Hearing the word of God, the word of God that is meant for you. I have a word of God, I have a word from God for you, for you specifically, not for the people next to you, not for your parents or your kids or your neighbors, not for the people who heard this sermon in person on Sunday, but for you. Listen, have you heard? Have you heard the good news? Have you heard that God loves you? Have you heard that Jesus died for you? And that Jesus was raised from the dead to give you new life? 
Have you heard the Holy Spirit whispering in your ear today? I know what the Holy Spirit is whispering to you. Well, I don't know exactly, but I know the gist. The gist is this, I love you. The gist is this, I am here within you and around you. I am your life and your passion and your hope. And I have a plan for you. And you might say, nah, the Holy Spirit isn't talking to me. The pastor isn't talking to me. This is just another sermon gimmick. Well, sure, it's a sermon gimmick. I don't really know how to preach without gimmicks. But just because it's a gimmick doesn't mean it's not true. The Holy Spirit is saying to you, I am here with you, and I have a plan for you. You see, I know you. I know that you have been the footpath. You know the folks who didn't listen to the word and it just got snatched away from those birds? You've been that. So have I. And I know that you have been the rocky ground. I know that you have been burned before. That you've been hurt and that you've turned away from God. You've done that. So have I. And I know that you've been among the thorns. I know that distractions have kept you from following Christ. I know you've been there. So have I. You've been all these things, but even when you were those things, that sower just kept sowing those seeds, so many seeds at every moment of your life. And I know that you have also been good soil. And I know that right now, at this very moment, you are good soil. Right now, at this very moment, you are ready to hear. Not everybody is right now, and that's okay, but you are. And that seed is ready to grow. This week, you will be good seed for the word. You will be good soil for the seed, I should say. At least some of the time you will be. Listen this week. Keep listening this week. Keep listening and you will hear God's word to you. You'll hear it. And you'll share that word. You'll share it with others in ways that might surprise you. You will bear fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, even 100-fold. This week, keep listening. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, of the body and the life, life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O oh God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. Direct your people to proclaim your love throughout the world in this congregation and in the congregation of Holy Trinity, Dingman's Ferry, along with their pastor, Niels Nielsen. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustain our creation, O God, by sending favorable weather, causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and inspiring in all people the need to be good stewards. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Maintain peace among all people, O oh God, and rise up lawyers to work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heal those who are sick, O oh God, including Gladys, Gladys. Des, 
Des. Val. Val. David. David. Kurt. Kurt. Diana. Diana. Amanda. Amanda. Neil. Neil. Larry. Larry. Owen. Owen. Shirk. Shirk. Eric. Eric. Steve. Steve. Walter. Walter. Marion. Marion. The family and friends of Sandra. Sandra. Shana. Shana. Tracy. Tracy. Vicky. Vicky. And Bo. Bo. Guide healthcare workers to care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life saving research, and counselors to care for victims of sexual abuse and exploitation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O God. Protect those who travel near and far. Accompany vis visitors to this congregation and nurture our faith. We celebrate the, with those having birthdays this, this week, including Luke Hoff, Edna Antonucci, and Sarah Godshock. We wish them a hap very happy birthday and a year of good health and happiness. Hear us, O oh God. Inspire us to be faithful by the faithful departed, O oh God, examples of your embodied love whose confidence in the resurrection guides us to living lives worthy of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share with one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Okay, we need to get this set up pretty quick. Yeah. You want to keep doing this while I get there? Yeah, come on. Let's give it to Alex. sea and sky. You are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world, world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, 
saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life, and we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your spirit upon us in this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world, through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. The God who calls us across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.